in this valley, I mean, we're, we're really blessed here. I call it God's country whenever I talk about it because um, it, it's a beautiful valley and people have a hard time sometimes believing that we're being impacted by climate change because of the beauty of our valley. And I said, you know, if you wanna see what the impact of climate change is, look up in the mountains when you drive up Highway 93. You'll see all those dead trees up there. And a lot of those, not all of them, are white bark pine. Ches kalcha pesya, etche suisum ches luis quext, kisut quicknum oxmachnik, ukatlux kawiska klautla. Good afternoon, everybody. My given name is Standing Grizzly Bear. My Suyapi name, my English name, is Mike Derglow. Uh, I am the department head for the Confederated Association Kootenai Tribes Tribal Historic Preservation Department. I've been working for the tribes now for going on 38 years. Um, in that process, we, uh, I, I had an idea that I wanted to put together a VR. We need to have a virtual reality experience around white bark pine and Clark's Nutcracker. And so I started thinking about, okay, how's this gonna come out? How's this gonna happen? So this is basically the big beginning of that series, we'll call it. And in that series, uh, you'll listen, of course, listen to me talk about how we, how we came, uh, how we developed our plan and how white bark pine came higher up on the priority list. Um, the, the second part of the, that series, um, what I'd like to do is basically take everybody, all of you on a journey will be us going to different locations. So we're gonna bring you along with us. You're gonna jump on Nutcracker Express, I'm calling it, uh, and you're gonna fly with us down to the Longhouse in St. Ignatius. We are going to, uh, we're gonna sit with the elders and we are going to listen to the stories about the cultural importance and significance of white bark pine nuts to us. Um, from, from the Longhouse, we're going to fly up to uh, the Kootenai um, Culture Center up in Elmo, and we're going to do the same thing up there. And from there, we're going to fly up to um, Boulder, I hope. Hopefully, we're going to go up there and um, learn from some of the other uh, program folks uh, in wildlife whisper means will share with us about the some of the wildlife species that rely on white bark pine seeds. Um, forestry will will really teach us how to identify the trees and maybe share some of the phenology, how they grow, and we can see actually see uh, some white or um, blister rust and pine beetles on the trees themselves. My name is Kellen Couture. I work for forestry, CSKT Forestry, uh, timber sales, also uh, as a tree climber for the white bark pine program. Um, I've been doing it for five years. Uh, I started as a trainee. I worked my way up. I'm on my second uh, contract as a, a certified tree climber. So, uh, well, step one process is obviously I have to get into the tree. So I would uh, set up my throw line, which is this like yarn like uh, line. It looks like yarn. Uh, you tie it up to a bean bag. You have this large uh, slingshot. And what I do is I aim for a branch and I shoot it to that branch. What I, the goal is is to make that bean bag wrap around closest to the base of the tree. And from that point, I will tie my climbing rope up to the other side where the bean bag's tied up to, and I'll pull it through. And then from that point, I'll put my harness on, uh, tie up to the rope, and then climb. So the, the whole point of the cage is that when we cage these cones, or let's say we left them uncaged, we won't have any pine cones to harvest when it's harvesting time. So these cages are meant to keep like squirrels, the Clark Nutcracker. Uh, we're trying to keep those birds out of there, trying to keep the squirrels out of there. Um, the reason for that is because we want to see like um, genetic changes or genetic differences in between the cones that we cage and collect. 
um, from each region that we uh, climb. The whole point for that as well is because uh, we have this disease called, uh, it's called blister rust. Hello, my name is Sheena Shaw Pete, and I am a reforestation forester for the Confederated Sish Kootenai Tribes Forestry Department. My main goal is to help restore white bark pine here for the Salish Kootenai people. White bark pine is being eliminated from a fungus called white pine blister rust. It was actually introduced by man, and over time, when diseases and insects come through forests, usually it happens over a period of time, and so plants are able to build themselves um, or adapt, you should say, adapt a defense system or ways to um, get past it and survive. But with the white pine blister rust, it was um, new into the area, and so there was no time um, for the trees to adapt or have any type of defense system towards it. So the white pine blister rust, the main ramification that is killing white bark pine but also once a tree is infected with white bark pine it is more susceptible to mountain western mountain pine beetle and so mountain pine beetle will come in and it will finish the job sometimes once the tree is infected and also we have fire suppression so since the forests are overstocked because they've been eliminating fire out of them they have became super clustered and that's just more prone for disease and insects to spread through there. But also since the forests are overstocked, when fires do come through, it has changed the structure of the fire completely with the structure of the forest. And right now we would be considered a lethal fire regime, which means that when fire comes through, obviously you can see around us how it had completely like wiped out everything yeah. to where you see all this new growth coming in. It's same top first succession, meaning everything's wiped out. What you see vegetation coming in right now is like the first that's going to come through. Um, white bark pine has came uh, higher up on the priority list because of that process. Uh, white bark pine, for those of you who don't know, is a high elevation, very slow growing tree that um, it grows above 6,000 feet. And it, it, some of those trees are over um, 200, 300 years old. So it wasn't until after we developed our plan that we realized how important those trees were in snowpack retention. Uh, it's a food source for, like I said, over 100 animals and it also um, decreases erosion and um, and they're dying off all over the all over the United States there is a national effort to restore white bark pine throughout the whole country from Boulder we're going to fly down to the greenhouse which is in Ronan at Forestry Greenhouse where currently they're growing approximately 30,000 uh, seedlings in the greenhouse and those seedlings or those saplings they uh, they actually distribute those around the country to different different uh, forest pro uh, programs BLM US Forest Service and others uh, to replant those trees uh, around the whole northwest um, northwest part of Montana they send those trees all over the place to, to replant. From the greenhouse, we are going to Three Lakes Peaks. Three Lakes Peaks is where you will meet my Edlawia. Uh, my Edlawia is my great great grandparent. I named that tree a couple years ago after um, we'd been talking about that tree for a couple years prior, and then finally I got to hike up there uh, with uh, Tony and his crew and, and uh, Rick from the college and some of the kids and, and I got to actually touch that tree, which was really, really uh, significant to me. Hey everybody, thank you so much for uh, coming on this journey with us. It's been exciting, it's been awesome, and uh, it, it's just a little taste, this little uh, snippet is kind of a teaser in a way of uh, the whole journey that we're gonna take you on. So we're looking forward to that and uh, stay tuned for more. We'll have that completed 
hopefully within the next month or two, uh, and we'll share that with everybody. Thank you. Take care. Stay well.